Hi, welcome to LessonsWithTroy.com. I'm Troy Brenning Meyer. Well, in this week's lesson, we're back to the C6 lap steel, and it's C6 lap steel basics, volume number seven. And in this one, I'm showing you some real easy, movable uh, country and bluesy licks um, that I play on the on the C6 lap steel. Now, these aren't hard to play or anything. You know, they're, they're nothing real complex. And you'll see, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the licks before I teach any of them. I'm gonna play all all of them. And um, then I'll kind of show you some ideas, kind of where, where I'm getting these licks out of. And then I'll go through and show you these licks. So you'll get a good idea of what you're getting with this lesson in the sample. So if you're ready, we got three pages of tablature. Go ahead and print them out. Uh, the first page looks like that. Um, just some nice kind of country bluesy licks that are all movable. So these are real useful, and, and I use them a lot when playing C6 lap steel. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. Okay, so real quick before I play through all these licks, I wanted to show you what's going on with the right hand as far as what strings we'll be working with. For a lot of these licks, we'll be working off of uh, a grab called a, either a minor or a major sixth. And I just think of them as, a, as it looks like interval of a sixth. And I think of that as being on your fifth string and second string. Okay, and basically you're playing with your thumb and your middle finger. Fifth string and second string. And the other grab will be on our fourth string and first string. And I'll show you several licks using those strings. And we'll be in the key of C um, up here on our 12th fret. But all these licks are movable, which means um, if I'm showing you them on the 12th fret, and that's a, over a C chord, you know, say you wanted to play them over a different chord, like say maybe over an F chord, you'd play it, play these licks on your fifth fret, because that's the fret for an F6 chord. And a seventh fret would be the G chord. So you can move these licks just to these different chord shapes and, and they'll work. So they're real nice for that. Okay, so basically how I look down, if you look down at your right hand and, and you grab your fifth string and your second string, notice how there's two strings in between those two strings. That's what I mean by a shape, like seeing this, this, this shape of, of picking it with your right hand. Same thing when you play your fourth string and your first string. When you're playing these licks, keep in mind how that looks as far as the grab goes. There's two strings in between the two strings that you're playing. That's at least how I think about it, and it seems to simplify things a lot with the right hand. And that works real well on your fifth string and your second string, and your fourth string and your first string. Okay. Now, other things, we're going to be doing a lot of palm blocking. Notice I have my right hand in front of the bridge. And anytime I, I pick something, I in between them, a lot of times I'll lay the heel of my hand down to mute it out. So it's not like this. You know, everything bleeding into one another. It's, it's just real nice and clean like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and play through all these licks. I think you, you got a, an idea of what to look at with your right hand. Keep in mind the palm blocking, and just think about those shapes. A lot of these licks are going to be using those minor and major sixths. On your fifth string and second string would be a minor sixth. And on your fourth string and your first string would be a major sixth. And just getting real quick into music theory, that is because when you're playing from an E note to a C note, that'd be like your fifth string to your second string, that's the note E to C. Okay, so that interval is what's called a minor sixth interval. Now, if you're playing from your fourth string to your first string, that would be, so let's say on your 12th fret, that would be a G to an E, and that would be a major sixth. So minor sixth on your fifth string and second string major six on your fourth string and your first string but if you just want to simplify it in your mind just look at that shape and say oh that's a, a shape a sixth the shape of a sixth okay that's how i do it at least kind of parallel sixth or whatever you want to call it and if that helps you hope hopefully uh that'll simplify things for you okay let me go ahead and play the play these licks Okay, so real quick, let me go ahead and play through all 10 licks, and uh, you can see exactly what the lesson's going to cover, what the licks sound like. Okay, here is lick number one. Once again, nothing too fancy, just using that minor and major six going up. Sounds like this. Starts on the end of beat four. One, two, three, four. 
And then lick number two is that just played backwards, coming back down. A one, two, three, four. Once again, lick number one. A one, two, three, four. Lick number two, coming back down. Okay, here's lick number three. So once again, it starts on the end of beat four. One, two, three, four. Let me play that again. There we go. Kind of a yodel lick. Once again, lick number three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'll show you all these licks, and, and um, you know, you'll get the tab of the lesson. Here's lick number four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, let me try that again. Lick number, this is lick number four. Starts on beat four, too. One, two, three. on a G chord there, kind of your five chord of your key. Okay, here's lick number five, kind of different. It's going to start on the end of beat three, and it's going to move from a C chord to a C7 chord. So let me try this one. A one, two, three. There it is. One, two, three. Once again, lick number five starts on the end of beat three, moving from a C to a C7 chord. A one, two, three. Right there is the sound of that kind of C7 chord. One, two, three. Okay, lick number six, we're basically going to move from a G7 chord to a C chord. And this starts on, on the end of beat four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That was lick number six. Okay, lick number seven was inspired by uh, the intro to Walking After Midnight. It's not exactly like the lick, you know, for copyrights, but um, it's a little bit different. Uh, here's what it sounds like. One, two, three. Okay, kind of change that one up again. Let me play it exactly the way it's written. Once again, lick number seven. One, two, three. And at the end, the first time I played it, I, I did that. You could do that if you wanted to, but I didn't. The way it's written in the tab is just... Once again, lick number seven. One, two, three. Okay, lick number eight, we kind of get into more of a bluesy sound with some uh, triplets. Here's what it sounds like. Lick number eight starts right on one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and lick nine and ten is more out of single note, kind of more out of the minor pentatonic scale for a nice bluesy sound. And you can play blues in C6. I'm going to have a lesson in the future where it'll be the scales and, and licks and everything playing blues in C6. But it's, you know, you know such a happy tuning that, that you kind of got to tilt your bar up and get these individual notes. So here's lick number nine. Right out of that minor pentatonic scale. Okay, and our last and final lick, lick number 10, sounds like this. It's kind of a longer, more complex lick, sliding into minor and major thirds. Once again. 
And then I've also got it written in alternate ending where instead of ending on this C, you're going to end on this higher C. Hear that? As opposed to... Just a different way of ending the lick. Um, so those are those are pretty cool licks. Um, let's go ahead and jump right on in, and I'll show you the technique, you know, that I'm using to play these, the muting, the right hand, and, uh, and uh, exactly what's going on. So get your tablature ready, and let's go.